Yesterday's prophecies, today's headlines. This is the Hal Lindsey Report. And now, Hal Lindsey. Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Hal Lindsey Report. Another mass killing took place in America last weekend. This one in Isla Vista, California, near the campus of the University of California of Santa Barbara. Seven died, 13 were injured. When mass shootings occur, like clockwork, people begin to talk about the need for more gun control. But the thing about laws in general, and gun laws in particular, is that they accumulate. There get to be more and more of them, not fewer and fewer. And as we've seen in the last few years, increasing gun control doesn't stop or even slow down these kind of events. Gun laws were rare in the 50s and 60s. Did they have killing sprees like this one back then? Not many. The FBI considers the killing of four or more people to be a mass killing. From 1900 to 1960, 60 years, there were a total of 28 mass killings in the United States. Since then, in six years less time, or 54 years, there have been more than 130, and this decade is on pace to be the worst ever. The St. Valentine's Day Massacre took place in 1929. Seven people died, the same number killed in Santa Barbara during last week's rampage. It happened in a warehouse in Chicago, not at or near a school. The dead were all notorious mob associates, not students. Yet it traumatized the nation and led to the first federal gun control law. We all know about the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, but can anyone list all the school shootings over the last 15 years? There are too many to remember. It seems obvious that something awful is going on in America, but some disagree as to just what it is. They point out that the number of murders in the United States adjusted for population growth has generally gone down over the last 30 years. However, in order to bring that rate down, we've turned much of America into a prison camp with incarceration rates that are through the roof. From the beginning of the 20th century until the mid-1970s, the number of imprisoned Americans remained roughly the same. From 1974 to 2009, that number increased 800%. The murder rate has fallen, but look what it took to make that happen. On the other hand, throwing vast portions of the population into prison has not even slowed down the type of mass killings like we saw last week in Santa Barbara. This is what happens when a culture turns its back on God and the values and principles of His Word. America has become largely a pagan society. Pagan societies are characterized by the worship of demons. For the last 40 years or so, popular music has been celebrating satanic rebellion. The video game industry makes billions of dollars promoting a playful flirtation with the demonic and sometimes outright Satan worship. Popular theme parks are loaded with skulls and other death imagery. Television shows try to outdo each other in the artistic expression of gruesomeness. It's true, there are a lot of things to be concerned about in America. Things such as drought, pollution, the erosion of our basic freedoms, the lack of industrial output, problems in health care, and terrorist enemies armed with nuclear weapons just to name a few. But none of them are as important as this. America is becoming pagan in its values and outlooks. Pagan cultures have a lot of religion, but their teachings exclude the one true God. Pagan cultures worship the body and sensuality. In videos he left behind, it seems the great complaint of the alleged Santa Barbara shooter, Elliot Roger, was that he was still a virgin at age 22. It infuriated him. He felt that women owed him sex. Now, where did he get that idea? Last week, I spoke about the skewed worldview promoted by pornography. Ah, there it comes. It gives young people the impression 
that everyone but them is out having wild sex all the time. It implies that women just walking down the street are in a state of perpetual lust. Because this young man felt rejected by women, he wanted to round them all up and put them in concentration camps. He would let most of them starve to death. A few he would keep alive as breeding stock. And that suggests another characteristic of a pagan nation. If you're perceived as weaker in any way, especially the women, paganism will enslave or kill you. If you want a preview of post-Christian world, look at the pre-Christian world. I'll be back after this message. On several days in the last few weeks, the area around Los Angeles, California has been pummeled by severe windstorms. Streets were littered with branches, limbs, and even whole trees. Television news showed one especially large and magnificent tree that had been growing in a neighborhood of picturesque homes. But now the tree was down. All its grandeur sprawled out awkwardly across the road. A news reporter walked to the end of the tree that had been in the ground and showed the viewers that despite the tree's splendor above ground, its roots had rotted. It had no chance in a storm. Unfortunately, storms will eventually come. Corruption in a society is like a rot in the tree's roots. And in our society, corruption is beginning to run rampant. Second Timothy chapter three begins, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. Then it describes what makes the last days perilous. A general corruption of character that takes place in most of the members of society. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. That is a powerful and accurate prophetic description of the time in which we live, a time when our society's moral roots are rotting. Corruption can remain hidden for a time, but it always seeps out. You've been hearing about the scandal at the Veterans Administration. The VA was caught cooking the books. CNN summarized it like this. At least 40 U.S. veterans died waiting for appointments at the Phoenix Veterans Affairs Healthcare System, many of whom were placed on a secret waiting list. They said, Sick veterans were forced to wait months to see a doctor, according to a recently retired top VA doctor and several high-level sources. In Los Angeles and Dallas, VA officials are accused of deleting medical appointments from the system to make the backlogs look smaller. They created false statistics in order to receive promotions and bonuses. They also did it to make their bosses up to and including the president, happy. It was win-win for the bureaucrats and politicians, but a disastrous loss for the veterans they've sworn to serve. There are lots of such scandals across the country revealing a culture of corruption within the VA system. Corruption that is killing people. But it's not unique to the VA. It's not even unique to the federal government. It has also spread to states and local communities. We've seen it surface in massive school cheating scandals, both students and teachers and administrators. The private sector has similar problem. Corruption destroys the foundation that make liberty, security, and prosperity possible in a nation. Conversely, integrity is the foundation of a nation's liberty, security, and prosperity. Liberty dies with corruption because when people are no longer trustworthy, they have to be watched more closely. But who watches the watchers? They can be corrupt too. Once it enters a system, 
Corruption spreads far, fast, and deep. If a policeman or a politician can be paid off, it puts the people with money in permanent control. Notice how small businessmen tend to endorse leaders who promise to keep the government out of their lives, while the biggest, wealthiest business leaders tend to favor a heavy regulatory environment. Those regulations become big businesses' safeguard against the competition from creative entrepreneurs. A new small business may invent a better mousetrap, but government rules don't care how great that product is or the good it will do for the world. The cost of trying to follow the volumes of rules kills vast numbers of the new businesses. This stifling of competition creates a chasm between the rich and the aspiring. Corruption like horrible cancer eventually kills the very body that gave it life. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 11 says, by the blessing of the upright, a city is exalted, but by the mouth of the wicked, it is torn down. I'll be right back.